resigned my job as pastor, gave up my car, my house, my salary, <laughs> and came to the Philippines with a promise of three meals a day. <laughs> and I've been here for 28 years. I already knew that I wanted to be a priest. And I got all the encouragement I needed from my parents and my pastor. And I enrolled in seminary at 13. After many years, high school, college, and beyond, suddenly they said, maybe if you would go out in the world and find a nice, a nice wife, it would all go away. And I wondered, what's that all about? I went out into the world and did find a very wonderful mother of my children and married life for many, many years and then many children. When I found out I was gay, that that's what they were talking about and I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> my wife said, I think it's good that we have a divorce so you can be free to be yourself and I can be free to be myself. So I got active in the gay community in 1971 and have been uh, active in the gay community ever since. I was a pastor in Detroit, Chicago, Phoenix, and then went to Los Angeles and worked in the international headquarters of MCC, the Metropolitan Community Church. When I was pastor, I found out that people don't come to you for pastoral counseling that says, Pastor, teach me how to pray. They always came with psychological problems and they, they thought it was pastoral counseling. So for that reason, I decided to go get a further education in psychology and I got a master's in counseling psychology and a doctorate in clinical psychology. I got involved in, in university work. But then one of the MCC friends of mine, pastor friends of mine says, Richard, I think it's time for you to go back into ministry. About that time, there was a vacancy for the uh, pastorate in Auckland, New Zealand. So I accepted it and worked there for several years. And a letter came to the national headquarters of MCC saying, I've been kicked out of my church for being gay and there's nobody here to help us. If there's nobody in that country that can help him, maybe, maybe I better be the one. <laughs> so I borrowed money and came to uh, Manila. I had a big, what we call the Pride Mass, and they signed a petition for me to come back and start an MCC ministry in Manila. There were some very fine organizations, but they were closeted which I found out made us the first openly gay and lesbian organization in the country. You know what? All the other countries in the world are having pride marches. I said, why don't we have a pride march? And they decided that we would have a pride march that June, June 1994. It was led by MCC and pro-gay and other organizations and people joined us. to make a big difference in the perception of the, of the general population of the Philippines that um, we're here and we are part of the country and, and we are, have a right to be, not only to be, but to be Christian if we want. When people say that in the Philippines, for example, where we don't have the right to, to have marriage sanctioned by the government, that, that, that it's only for men and women. That's been my ministry for so many years to, to help people understand that it's part of who they are to love the one they love 
and to be free to love the one they love. And no matter what they call it, it's love. But the Philippines is a very religious country, and we know what the Bible says about that. <laughs> I say, no, I'm afraid that you probably don't know what the Bible says about it. It doesn't say any place in the Bible that God is going to put all homosexuals in hell. <laughs> nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does it say that or that um, that it's not right and not okay to love the one you love. These bad translations and these bad interpretations are not the true message of God's Word. When I was told that it was, I was past retirement age of MCC, I, I was too young. <laughs> I was too young to stop ministry. So I had an opportunity to get together a couple of other ways of serving the people. One was the Order of St. Aelred, which was a spiritual community of people. And another was the Catholic Diocese of One Spirit, which I eventually became a bishop of. About that time, the AIDS crisis in the Philippines was getting worse. And we decided that it's time that we do something about service to those people who have been diagnosed and, and tested as, as being what we call PLHIV, persons living with HIV. About that time, one of my dear friends came to me and says, Father, I'm HIV positive. My life is over. I guided him in what to do to do everything right and he wouldn't have to worry about that. And he got very positive, got a new job and a new lover, and everything was going fine. And all of a sudden, he disappeared. And I found out later on, is in San Lazaro very, very sick with AIDS. And also at the same time, my gay son contacted me and told me he was HIV positive. As a result of both of those incidents, I wrote the article for Outrage Magazine saying how to do everything right while living with HIV. The Well Wellness Program for people who are living with HIV. If they do everything right, they can stay well, continue their career, and go on with their life. Sometimes people say to me, where did that expression, sex positive theology come from? The point is, we've all been brought up with sex negative theology. No masturbation. No condoms, no sex except when married, and no sex in marriage except to make babies. <laughs> we looked at what Jesus actually said, which, which was none of those things, and we come up with sex positive theology. All sex is good if it is not harmful or forceful. Some sex is better if it is within, accompanied by loving and caring. Some sex is best if it is in a committed, long-term, enduring, loving relationship. Actually, over the years, I've received some nice awards unexpected and certainly much appreciated. In recognition for the inspiring contribution to promote respect for all people, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity or gender expression, SOGI, and in pushing for equal rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons. Well, 25 years ago this month, 
We were here in the Quezon Memorial Circle uh, for the first Pride March rally. We marched up here, we got as far as the City Hall. We had a rally that started out with a, with a mass. And it was the 25th anniversary of Stonewall. So I gave them a talk about, they had their Stonewall and now we're having ours. <laughs> and then Oscar Atadero gave them a very powerful manifesto about gay rights. And then some other organizations gave talks. We had 50 people in the first Pride March and 30,000 last year in Marikina. It's just so amazing that from the LGBTI community have been brought out of the closet and out of weirdness and out of secrecy and, and out of suspicion. As I come to the twilight years of my life, I look with great satisfaction and great pride and great admiration upon the dozens and dozens of dedicated activists who have brought the LGBTI people of the Philippines to where they are now. I may have been there in the beginning, but oh my goodness, so many wonderful people have done the work over the years and will continue to do the work. All these people have gone to great lengths to, to bring the truth to the people of the Philippines. And I'm proud of them.